Hey y'all, I'm so glad you joined me today for part two of my sessions on the seven days of creation where Jenny Fletcher interviews me in my own closet. Yeah, that's where my podcast studio is. But y'all, God keeps unveiling his mysteries to me about the seven days of creation. I'd never really studied them until this summer when I was doing a teaching for my inner circle and and also for the seven day challenge I did in my community group, Creative Community with Sarah Thurman, which is my Facebook group. If you're not a part of that, then please ask to join that private group and I'll for sure let you in. But y'all, God just keeps telling me more and more about these seven days. And since he made us as creatives, we are to spend time to study how the great creator did it, y'all. And so one of the things that I've taken a step and action for is that I have now put into my week a day of rest. I grew up in a church where we kept and observed the seventh day Sabbath from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. And I'm not saying that is wrong if you were doing it. That is certainly, you know, if you're hearing from God, that that's something you need to do. But what I understood later uh, from my childhood then is that God came as our rest and really he's our rest all the time. And I understand that. But in my business right now and in my life right now, God is showing me that I was working too much. I was actually working seven days a week. And he said, come away with me, spend time with me, commune with me. And as I studied the seventh day where God was not tired y'all after working for six days, which whatever time period each of those six days was, but he wanted to hang out with Adam and Eve who he had just created on day six. He wanted to commune with them. He wanted to walk with them in the cool of the day. He wanted to spend time with them. And I know my God, my creator, wants my full attention one day out of the week. He wants me to commune with him. He does not want me to be thinking, thinking, thinking always about my business, Acts 1-8 Blessings. He wants me to come away and rest and enjoy the beautiful work that we have done together from the previous week. So I just wanted to share that with you. Like I ask and pray that God would reveal anything that he wants to reveal to you through this podcast to move into action, to commune with our great creator, y'all. And I don't want it to be legalistic. There should be freedom as we connect with our God. He loves us so much and he wants us to have a freedom and he is our rest. So I just bless you as you listen to part two. And hey, comment, let me know. You can find details on that in the uh, show notes if you want to communicate to me. Many blessings, y'all, as you listen to the final part about the seven days of creation. Okay, are you ready to dive into day six? Yes, it was a really big day, y'all. Day six, oh my word, I'm like, God, as I'm talking to him about this, that was a lot you did on day six. And I do just want to say, I do not know, y'all, it is mystery to me whether each of these seven days were a 24-hour period. And I know there's many discussions in the religious world and the scientific world about them being more than 24 hours. And y'all, I don't really know. I don't know. I just leave that to God for now. And it's not like I'm not asking him for understanding of it, but it is a mystery. And so I just accept the mystery because God is so amazing. And there's some mysterious things that I don't yet quite understand. But y'all on day six, I just want to read this to you. God said, and I'm reading from verse 24, Genesis 1, let the earth produce every class and kind of living creature, livestock, crawling things, wild animals, each after its kind. And so it happened. And remember, God is still speaking, right? And God made the wild animals according to their species, livestock according to their species, and all the creatures that creep along the ground according to their species. And God loved what he saw, for it was beautiful. 
And then God said, Let us make a man and a woman in our image to be like us, and let them reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the livestock, over the creatures that creep along the ground, and over the wild animals. So God created man and woman and shaped them with his image inside them. In his own image, he created his masterpiece. Yes, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them in his love, and he said, Reproduce and be fruitful. Populate the earth and subdue it. Reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creature that lives on earth. So, and it continues on, but he surveyed all that he had made, and I'm reading from verse 31. And God surveyed all he had made, and he said, I love it, for it pleased him greatly. Evening gave way to morning, day six. In other translations, you've already taught us that there's a distinction between God's creation day one through five and day six in that day one through five, he says, it is it is good. And on day six, he says, it is very good. Yes. And I'm wondering if it has anything to do with him actually creating more creators. Yes, he absolutely loved it. And when we look forward into chapter two, In verse 7, it talks about how he used his hands, y'all. Yahweh himself, Yahweh God, used his hands to sculpt man. He used his hands. Like he didn't just speak us into being. And then he breathed his breath of life into us. And so I want to read chapter 2, verse 7 from the Passion. Yahweh God scooped up a lump of soil sculpted a man and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man became alive, a living soul. So y'all, this is so beautiful to think about that with man, it was different. We were different than the fish. We were different than even the animals that he had created earlier on day six, the ones that walked on the land and scooted along the land. Like, We were made special, and he said it was very good. And in the Passion, it says, I love it. It pleased him greatly. It pleased him greatly to create us in his image. And remember, he breathed his life into us. Y'all, we have the very breath of Jesus in our soul. Like, it is life. We have his life in us. Sarah, can you tell us a little bit more about the revelation you have about that life flow that we hold as creators willing to create? So y'all, we were created to create. I mean, I've said that probably five or 10 times already. It is so important that we grasp this knowledge. It is part of our purpose on this earth to create even more. And y'all, God's never going to run out of creativity. And I want to tell you that I believe very clearly that there is a battle in the heavenlies over us creating. You see, Satan cannot create, and he is our enemy. And he rebelled against God. He at one time was Lucifer, one of the beautiful archangels that praised God. But he wanted to be like God. He had a rebellious spirit, and he fought against God. And so he was thrown down as an archangel, and he now is named Satan. And he also has demons that were part of the angels. One third of the angels went with him. And so there is a spirit realm, and I'm not afraid of it because I already know Jesus is victorious over the enemy. But Satan cannot create anything new. Okay, he's not made in God's image. You are the only one that is made in God's image, that is made to create. And so I want you to think about the lies that you have believed that you cannot create anything new. See, Satan is going about trying to steal, kill, and destroy all that he can from the beloved, beautiful children of God. We are his children. We are heirs to him. And he created us to create. And so the lies of comparison, like I'm not any good. I can't do this. Y'all, those are straight from Satan himself. And so I'm asking you to pull those lies out and stomp on them and say, no, Lord, I'm going to start. 
Y'all, the name of my podcast is Small Beginnings. Small Beginnings. In Zechariah 4.10, it says, The Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Satan does not want you to even begin. He does not want you to even have a thought of creating something new. But I believe when God's people pick up their pens, pick up their paintbrushes, open up their homes to show love to others, y'all, darkness has to be dispelled. Only God's glory and light comes through us creating how God made us to create. It truly is the purposes of why he made us. There's no other creature that can do this. We are made in his image and we are made to create. And so let's don't give Satan a second thought when he says you're not any good. Look at hers. Y'all, God made us to create each uniquely in our own place to bring our creation into places that could be dark because when the light shines in there, darkness has to leave. So our food carries God. Our quilts carry God. We carry the Holy Spirit of God in how we create and what we create because we're hanging out with Him as we create. And then what we create carries power. Y'all, I recently heard of a woman, a friend of mine, created a painting and put it on Facebook, and a woman was healed of 15 years before of trauma that had happened to her. And she looked at this painting and she was totally healed. She could feel the physical and emotional and spiritual healing happen as she looked on a painting that was on a Facebook page. What we create carries God. And this is beautiful. And so let's create. Let's create, y'all. He created us to create. And let's don't give a place to the lies that you've been hearing. Let's stop comparing. Yes, we should create with excellence, and that takes skill, and that takes practice. And so let's ask God for extra help in our writing, extra help. I ask Him all the time, Lord, help me create. What do you want me to create today? Help me put the layers on and guide my hands guide my thoughts, and He will, y'all. This is why He created us. So, oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, I just love that, too. I'm thinking as you're talking about how we can just simply choose to show up with the light of Jesus. We can create atmospheres for others to (laughs) be healthy. We can create really anything, and there's power from the kingdom of heaven, from the king himself that flows when we choose to create. And I think of my children creating. And like you're saying, we should have excellence. But even if we don't have excellence, there's still power in it. Yes, absolutely. That's so cool. Yes, because the process is way more than the end result. Because we're hanging out with Him, we're connecting to His Spirit. And so there's a thing called creative flow where you sort of, don't think so much. And I've heard it said, Josie Lewis, a friend of mine, says that the strict librarian's brain turns off and you just move into that flow where you're not really thinking, you're just creating. Hey, y'all, I wanted to tell you about my e-course, 100 Days Creating with God. I believe it is the single most important course you can take. It's a great starting place. See, because I believe that you have to develop a daily discipline before you can move into the artist that God wants you to be. Now, some of you may be doing artistic work with paints, but others of you may be starting a flower garden. You also may be cleaning out drawers and getting organized, and that may be your place of creativity. God says He made us in His image, and He is the great creator, then we were made to create too. And so my e-course, 100 Days Creating with God, is a great start for you. It will help you to develop your daily discipline. First, you'll have some inner changes inside of you. You'll connect with God and His Holy Word in new ways. And then secondly, you will develop your skill set as a creative. I will set up the rhythms for you where you will be spending time with God every day for 100 days. It will change your life. So consider taking my e-course, 100 Days Creating with God. Well, 
I am ready for day seven. Okay. Well, God was ready for day seven too, y'all. He, it was, I, I, I can't even imagine like when you think back to day one, when it was just chaos and without form and dark and to what all was happening when day seven arrived. And so I'm going to read from Genesis 2. And so the creation of the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had completed creating his masterpiece. And so on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. So God blessed the seventh day and made it sacred because on it, he paused to rest from all his work of creation. So this is so beautiful, y'all, because what we know of God, and I think you would agree that God probably doesn't get tired, you know, he's God. So he didn't rest because he was tired. He rested because he wanted to commune with what he had just created. And most importantly, what he had created in his image, Adam and Eve. He wasn't weary. He was simply rejoicing in what he had created. I believe what God has shown me is the most important part is communing with him. And really, y'all, we have eternal communion with him. We have eternal rest with him. It never will end. Do you know on this day as he describes day seven, he doesn't say that evening gave way to morning on the seventh day. Y'all, this rest with him is never meant to end. It is for all eternity that he made us to commune with him. Can you just imagine like in the Garden of Eden, which we know in chapter two, it talks more about this, that Adam and Eve are walking around and God is just walking with them and talking to them and hanging out with them. Like how beautiful. And so God is inviting us in to rest with him. And y'all, I'm learning more and more about this. And I know that some of you may actually observe a seventh day rest. And at one point in my life, I did as well. uh, From sundown on Friday night to sundown on Saturday night. And I bless you with that if that is your current choice of worshiping God and, and pulling away. And I know there's so much value of coming away from the world and hanging out with God and resting with him and communing with him. But what I know is that we have record, and I'm going to read a little bit from Hebrews 4, that this rest is eternal, that he does want us to commune with him. He does want to give us a rest that is 24-7. However, for us to truly understand God's rest, we have to pull away from the busyness of the world. And he says, come away with me. We have many examples in the Bible where he says, come away. We saw Jesus do that. He went up into the mountains and spent a few days by himself. You know, he went away to be with his father so he could be filled up to then pour out for the next season. In Hebrews 4.1, it says, now God has offered to us the same promise of entering into his realm of resting and confident faith. It's a realm of resting, y'all. I want you to think of it more than a 24-hour period. And I believe God even revealed more to me in the last few weeks as I've started studying it, that He really is inviting us, He's inviting me, He's inviting you into an eternal rest that does not ever stop. (laughs) That is a beautiful reality that he's waiting to hang out with us. He's waiting to talk to us, like he's waiting for this relationship. And so the Sabbath, this time to get away, is open. He's welcoming us to it. You know, Sarah, I had heard that God provides rest for us. I did know that we're supposed to learn to rest in him, but what I did not understand until you're teaching is that he made provision for this in the garden, in the seven days of creation. Yes. The provision was already made for us to have an eternal rest. Yes. 
I love that revelation. Thank you so yes, much. Yes. Yeah. And he's welcoming us, y'all. He's wooing you. If you're hearing him right now in your heart, like that's God saying, come, come, open up your Bible, sing a worship song to me. Can you imagine the praise? And y'all, the Garden of Eden was so beautiful. And this is why I love going into nature because I feel like I'm closer to God when I'm outside, when I'm in my garden, when I'm in my orchard, when I'm on a walk, when I'm on a hike. So if at all possible, I just encourage you to, if the weather's permitting, to find a little place to take a walk, to have a sit, you know, and take a cup of tea and and sit with God outside for a little bit and let him speak to you about this rest that he has available all the time. We don't have to wait until the seventh day. We can have it always with him. Sarah, is there anything else you want to share with your listeners before I ask you the final question? Well, I've said so much, but I'm going to go back to why I believe I made this podcast and why Jenny came to interview me. Y'all, it really is God's purpose for you to understand how He made you and your identity as His child And his children are made in his image. And so you're made to create. Like, take, this is his purpose for you. Because when you create, you bring his glory. Your light shines through how you create, what you create, even during the time you're creating. It's the process. It's not always just the final product. I mean, I've already said all these things, but y'all create Create, create, create. Ask God, commune with Him, and He'll show you even more. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for your teaching on the seven days of creation. And in light of that, would you answer the question, like your mama always said, how good can God be? Wow, y'all. He's so good. He made us like Him. He made us in His image. He gave us his breath of life. He breathed breath into us. There's no other creature he made that he gave his spirit to. And so God is so good, y'all. He says, go. He blesses us. And and so I bless you with this anything that's new revelation to you of how God made you. He is so good. He is so good. And it's never going to end, y'all. He's inviting us in. So will you keep coming? Yeah, will you keep coming and walking with Him? Will you keep coming? Will you keep going on this journey of God's goodness? It's never going to end. Thank you, Lord. for listening to this episode of Small Beginnings with Sarah. I pray you've been encouraged and inspired by the stories that you have heard today. Please follow me on my social medias, including Instagram at Acts18Blessings, Facebook at Acts18Blessings, and on my website, sarahthurman.com. You can help others start their own small beginnings by subscribing to my podcast and leaving a review. One sentence is wonderful, and it really helps share the word. And I want to leave you with one final question, and I hope you can answer it. How good can God be?